Hello everyone. Um, so we are going to be starting on our paint tonight. Um, so this is going to be a moonlit uh, frozen lake and that frozen lake is going to have a curling sheet on it and actually a game in play. So this is going to be a little bit more complicated, take a little bit more time, but we're going to set it up just like we normally would. And so I am using a sheet of paper. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've started to tape down the edges. This is to make sure everything stays nicely and in place so my paper doesn't move. Um, I am using painter's tape. Uh, one of the things that I like to do with it is I actually like to take the painter's tape. Uh, I like to touch it to my pants or to whatever I have that's like the hairiest thing I have so that I lose some of that stickiness um, and gather some, you know, cat hair or <laughs> whatever fuzzies are still on my, my pants. Um, this way, when I take it off, I find that it removes a lot more cleanly, especially if you're using just like normal paper. That paper, um, the, pa the painter's tape isn't designed to take off, to be taken off of paper, it's designed to be taken off of walls. So I find that, you know, making it a little bit less sticky is helpful. Okay, so for today we'll need all of our primary colors, including white. Um, if you want to use black, you can. I typically use the complementary color to make the um, the color darker, so I'm not a huge fan of black. Um, so just something to of using, you know, the pigment black. Um, but anyway, so uh, red and blue, a little bit of yellow today. We're not going to use a ton of yellow today, and then white. Um, always is a good idea to have. Water cups, you want to have your water cup filled about halfway full. Uh, you're definitely halfway through the painting, going to need to rinse this out um, and wash your paintbrushes thoroughly. So halfway full is really all you need. Also notice this is a cup that I um, don't drink out of. This is specifically a painting cup, so using a plastic cup might be a good idea as well or something that you're going to wash very thoroughly uh, after you're done. These, typically these paints are non-toxic, but you know, just safer than sorry. Um, when I'm painting, I typically use three different sizes of paintbrush. I normally use a flat paintbrush, I use a round paintbrush, and then I use a smaller detailed paintbrush. Um, today, you're definitely going to want a smaller detailed paintbrush, and you're probably going to want a round paintbrush. If you have the flat one, awesome. These are really great for straight lines, but um, most of our painting today doesn't have a ton of straight lines, so um, working with two will be fine. And then you'll have want to have something to wipe your... Um, paper or like a paper towel, napkin, um, to wipe the excess, excess water on. <laughs> anyway, um, when you're loading up your tray with paint, I just use a paper plate. You could use um, an old piece of cardboard, you know, recycle, any of that's fine. But you always want to put it on the outside edges because you're going to be pulling that paint towards the middle. So you want to have that middle free. Okay. So before we actually start with the paint, we're going to sketch out our idea. So let's talk about the sketching out this idea. So this, since this is going to be a moonlit frozen lake, we want to have most of the picture, about two thirds of it, be the lake itself. So I'm just going to draw myself a very light horizon line about one third of the way down to so the second half will be the lake. Then I'm going to show kind of the shore of the lake with just some wiggly zigzag lines. And then it'll kind of go off, so that'll be where the edge of my um, my lake is. And I'm going to add a little bit more down here just to make it visually interesting for me. There we go. So a little bit of detail there. In the back, typically around lakes, I'm going to go ahead and make it lighter, so you can see. And let me make this darker so you can actually see what I drew. I draw very lightly, so in case I need to erase it, it erases very easily. There we go. Now you can see what I drew. Alright, so then in the background I'm going to put some mountainous areas, so those are just wiggly zigzag lines, and then I'm going to put some of them over here. These can be mountains, these can be trees, it's really your choice, you can decide when you're painting. I'm going to put my moon in the background. If you're really not comfortable drawing a circle, um, you can just find something that's circular to trace. That can be really helpful. And then I'm going to do some clouds kind of, again, those wiggly zigzags. You're just finding them all over the place in this picture. And those are going to become my clouds later on. So, and personally, I like to paint directly over these and then paint them in later on. But this way you know what we're going towards. 
All right, so where's the curling gonna come? So this whole area is gonna become where we put our curling sheet. So because of this thing called the illusion of depth, so D-E-P-T-H, as things get farther away from us, they get lighter and less detailed, and as things get closer to us, they get um, larger and more detailed. So when we're doing our close house, it's going to be a much larger oval. And yes, I said oval. So this is because of the way, you know, angles work and everything like that. When you're standing on top of the house, it looks like a circle. But when you're standing next to the house, it distorts and becomes an oval. So I'm sketching out that oval shape. And now I'm making the rings inside the house. And our house has three, and then we have the button in the middle. And then I'm gonna imagine that these lines go straight back, straight back. I'm not actually gonna, I'm gonna wind up erasing these later on because on an ice, you on the ice you probably wouldn't have, you know, outdoor ice, it probably wouldn't have um, sheet markers. But anyway, this oval back here is gonna be much flatter because again, of the angle that you're at. Um, so if you can't see all of your rings in this house, that's okay. Just try your best. And again, this one's gonna be flatter. So we did those edges, those lines, imagine that they kind of disappear back into nothing um, because that's the angle that we're looking. It's the vanishing point. It's where everything vanishes to. So we wanna make sure that our angles are right. So they just kind of imagine that they're going back into the distance. And then if you really are interested in adding you know, some extra details like a hog line or things like that, you're welcome to do it. But again, this is a frozen lake. It's not necessarily a perfect sheet of ice. Um, and then one thing that I was interested in adding to this later on is you're actually gonna be from, from the perspective of the skip um, holding the broom. So we'll add that later on. You can kind of see it here in the original sketch. So we have holding the broom and then you can actually play whatever game you want and there's gonna be someone delivering at the end. But again, those are things that we'll add at the very, very end when we have everything else painted. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this actual painting now that we have it sketched out. Uh, if there's anything that you feel you wanna add or you want to remove, now is a good time to kind of practice with it uh, and try that out. Um, I personally am going to erase my clouds And then make sure I remove that so it doesn't get stuck, the eraser debris, so it doesn't get stuck in my paint. All right, so let's get started. For most of this painting, I'm gonna be using my round paintbrush. Uh, again, because I have a lot of these wiggly edges, these very organic edges. Um, so yes, all right, let's do this thing. So to actually start this painting, we are gonna be blending the sky. So blending means that you have one color on the top, one color on the bottom and they mix together in the middle to be something new. So towards the bottom edge, I'm gonna have it be almost a purplish color. And at the top, it's gonna to be pretty much blue, like a very dark blue. So my blue is already very dark to begin with. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna make that purple color. So I'm scooping some of my blue out of the blue pile. I'm gonna wash out my paintbrush. Good practice is to hold your water cup while you're washing it so it doesn't spill. But you know, for time's sake, I'm not gonna worry about that for today. And then since the bl my blue is very dark, it's very rich in color, I know that I'm going to have to put more red than blue to make this actually become purple. See how sometimes it almost becomes black? So something to kind of be aware of as you're doing this. If you want to lighten it up, you can always take a little bit of white, kind of lighten that color up just a little bit. I actually like to spin my paintbrush and get a lot of that extra paint off. There we go, lightening it up a little bit. So when I mix my colors together like this, I tend to not do like totally mixed together colors. I tend to have them have their originals a little bit. You can, you can see it a little bit better there. There you go. Um, I think it gives a nice natural variation to the color rather than having it be perfectly uniform. 
So whenever you're painting, you always want to start with what's farthest away first and then slowly overlap the things that are closer. So I'm just going and I'm also doing this technique that's called outline fill in where I'm outlining around an object and then I go back and I fill it in afterwards. It allows you to get a much smoother, cleaner line. Then to just start painting it. And if you didn't paint exactly what your mountains were, but you're fine with them out now, then that's just fine with me. Sometimes my paintbrush gets a little bit top heavy. So I'll spin some of that extra paint off of it instead of washing it out and losing it. And then keep going. So one of the things with painting that can be so challenging is that the paintbrush moves differently than a pencil. And that's something that is just kind of a learned thing. Um, the longer the hair is on your paintbrush, the harder it is going to be to kind of predict where it's going to go. So if you have a very, very long paintbrush, it can be really great for straight lines, but when you start curving and doing other things, it can be really challenging to predict what direction the paintbrush is going to bend in. So I'm going to paint kind of around this moon. I can actually paint in, potentially paint in the moon later on um, if I accidentally paint it over it too much. And now I'm going to wash this paintbrush out. Actually, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wash the paintbrush out and transition into that blue. So wipe off the extra on the side, dab it off on your paper towel, and then go and pick up the blue. And with the blue, I'm going to paint it just straight across the top. Paint around where my moon goes. Again, if you wind up accidentally painting over your moon, that's fine. You can always paint your moon in at the very end because nothing's really overlapping it. So it'll be just fine. Okay, so I mentioned in the beginning that we're going to be doing this technique called blending. And blending, again, is where you're mixing two different colors together in order to create a new color or gradient or ombre effect, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same thing. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing those colors together while both colors are still wet. And yes, this is not the best circle ever. We'll fix it in the end, it's okay. And we're gonna just mix it together. So I'm going down into that purple with the blue, and now I'm bringing that purple up into the blue. So bring the blue down, bring the purple up. So back and forth works really, really well. And then bring it up. If you've gone too heavy with one color, or the other one, you can always just go back with, it, with, with whichever color you kind of lost and add it in. I'm just mixing it. And again, if you accidentally, like I painted over my mountain a little bit right here, if that happened to you, I'm going to lighten this up so you can actually see it. If that happened to you, it's fine. You, it, that's the wonder with paint is that you can paint over it. It's amazing. Now, um, if you want to add stars to the sky, you can use the tip of your paintbrush to do it, or you can have fun doing a splatter technique. So I'm going to take my paintbrush. I'm not going to dry it off. Um, so I've got a little bit of water in my paintbrush to thin out my paint. And then I'm going to put my finger out, and I'm going to flick. So be careful because it does get everywhere. So be careful of your computer as you're watching this. And then just kind of make some stars. You can do this later on to make some snow. I just went into the white and did it. And, you know, whenever you're happy with it, stop. Wash out your paintbrush, and then you're ready to move on. Okay, so I do have some random bits of white here, so I'm just going to kind of brush those away so that I don't accidentally pick them up later on in my painting. Um, you know, paint washes off. You're going to be messy at the end of it. It's okay. And then let's talk about our mountains, our trees. So since this is nighttime, everything's dark. So it's not the perfect exact color that you're used to it being. So, you know, if these are the Blue Ridge Mountains, go ahead and make them blue. If they're, you know, something else, then it's kind of your choice if you want them to be trees or mountains, basically is the, the thing here. So I'm going to go with kind of a mountain effect. So I'm going to pick up just some of that straight blue. I'm going to pick up some of that really dark purple that I have left in the corner. I'm mixing just a little bit. I can even pull some more of my red. 
so I don't use any of that white that was in the purple that we originally made. So now it's going to be different than this purple. And I can start to paint with that. So again, just do that technique that we talked about, the outline fill in. Pick up more paint as you need it. Outline around the ground line. And again, I rather enjoy the natural variation that happens. and you don't fully mix the color. All right. So we're gonna add a little bit of brightness to this now. So I'm gonna go just into the straight up white, and then right on the top, we're just gonna kind of do a dabbing technique. So that's kind of where you're just using the tip of your paintbrush to kind of press in the white. And I'm doing it only on the side that's closest to the moon. And then I would do again the same thing on the other side. So it just gives a little bit of dimension to your overall picture. So again, I'm just going to pull some of that. I need to mix a little bit more of that paint for myself. Add a little bit of that red. And if you're going to mix your colors, but you're not going to wash out the color in between, I'm notorious for doing that. Um, just make sure you're not pulling from the direct middle of your paint, like I kind of did there, um, because that's a sure way to kind of contaminate the whole thing. So try and pull just from the edges. Again here, we're going to outline around it. And it's okay that these are two different colors. It's Again, this is nature we're painting. It's not perfect. And then once you have everything outlined, you can go back and fill it in. And then when you're ready, go into your white. And again, do that dabbing technique where you're just kind of right at the tip, bring it down a little bit. Blending it in, remember blending, right on the side of the mountain that's facing the moon. Maybe here it'll just be on the tip. Pick up more color as you need it. If you've picked up too much color, you can always blot it off on your paper towel. And you're just getting some depth, D-E-P-T-H, not D-E-A-T-H, some depth, some interest some three-dimensional aspect to your picture. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, and now I'm ready to kind of move on to the bank on the side. So the bank on the side, again, you have some options. Do you wanna use kind of the same purplish, bluish colors we've already been using? Do you wanna to transition to something that's more brown because maybe the grass is dead over there? Or do you wanna do a very dark green? Um, so I'm thinking, that I like the idea of the very dark green with a touch of brown to it. So I'm going to pick up some of my blue. Um, since I'm making a very dark green, I'm going to use mostly blue and just a little bit of yellow. Because blue and yellow make green. For all of you who have forgotten, it's a thing. It's okay. And be careful when you're pulling your yellow that you don't contaminate your whole yellow because yellow does not come back from you putting blue in it. It will just turn green. So again, just pull from the edge. Pull as you need it. And I mentioned that I'm going to make this a little bit brown, so I'm going to take just a dot of that red. And that red's going to help to neutralize how vibrant that green is and kind of get it more to our sedate tone that we have kind of going on here. And again, I'm going to outline and fill in, so I'm going to outline around this. And remember, the longer the tip of your paintbrush is, the longer the hair is on it, the harder it is to kind of predict where it's going to go. 
So if you have a lot of paint like I do after mixing your colors, kind of spin your paintbrush and move the paint back onto the tip. Sometimes even adding a little bit of water to your paintbrush will help with its ability to move the paint. And then just outline around where you want to paint. and then go back and fill it in. And then take before you change colors or you mix a new color or any or you wash out your paintbrush really. Um, always check and make sure that you don't need to use that color anywhere else. So like I need to use the same color down here because I chose to add a little bit more. Again, outline it so you get a nice smooth edge. If you're struggling with making a smooth edge, add a touch of water, just a touch of water to that paint. Because the paint, as it gets dries, the viscosity thickens, and it gets harder and harder to use it. So adding a little bit of water helps the whole flow of everything. And then once you have everything outlined, go back and fill it in. Okay, so here is where we're going to take a break and we're going to give this a chance to dry. Because if I were to paint the, the ice right now, what would happen is the ice would pick up all of this green that I've now painted. So I don't want that to happen. Um, when you take your break, wash out your water cup and your paint brushes in the sink. Make sure it's all rinsed out and everything's ready to go. Get yourself a new paper towel and then we'll see what's next. Um, before we go, again, I'm going to take a little bit of another color just to lighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to kind of apply that, again, in that kind of dabbing motion. And I took a bit too much here, so I'm just kind of mixing it all together. And right on the edges, again, that are closest to the moonlight, we're going to lighten them just a little bit. And this will help it make, again, make your picture look a little bit more realistic. And if you took too much, you can always go back with the original color and kind of smooth it out. And the stuff that's closer to you, if you want to make that even brighter, that's okay. Because that's the stuff you'd be able to see a little better. Alright you guys, I hope that you've enjoyed kind of learning the basics of this. Please come back and watch the second video on how to paint the sheet. And then I'll do an additional video at the very end of how to paint in the rocks. Alright everybody, um, I hope you've had fun. If you have any questions, let me know.